Howdy, Paprika! It's Miss Kosh. I am back doing more of Mr. Passwater's Unit 3 multiple choice questions. So, um, as always, no, get your teacher to go to the Facebook group if you want the PDF um, 1, 2. I haven't looked at these problems. 3, I think um, he posted a whole bunch of stuff recently. Um, I'm not sure it's been proofread, so I'm catching a few mistakes here and there. Um, that sounds terrible. I don't mean it quite like it sounded, but um, I don't blame him. I would make mistakes if I did as much work as he I do make mistakes. Um, but anyway, like, subscribe, comment below. Hopefully you find this beneficial, and um, we're just going to jump in and see what happens. Okay, so what are the values of theta for this? Okay, so we're going to say, well, 3 secant of theta is equal to 6 divided by 3. Um, secant is cosine's buddy, and so this is 1 over cosine of theta is equal to 2. So I can take the reciprocal of each side, or cross multiply if you want to think of it that way. Um, basically, we're saying when does cosine equal 1 half? Well, cosine equals 1 half um, at pi over 3 and at 5 pi over 3. Cool. Okay. Um, a similar idea here, we have cotangent of theta is equal to root 3. Cotangent is tangent's buddy, so it's the reciprocal of tangent. So tangent is going to be the reciprocal of that, which is root 3 over 3. This is the less steep line. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the very last video I made. Um, and this is pi over 6 and then in quadrant 1 and then 7 pi over 6 in quadrant 3. There we go. Great problem. I like trick. I think it's fun. Um, uh, okay. That feels similar. 5 plus root 3 secant. Oh, it was 5 plus 3 secant. You know, it's the same idea. We're going to come down to, um, probably, well, okay, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I, I, um, the more you practice this, the more you can kind of just see what's coming. We subtract 5, we get negative 2, and then I divide by, um, so I get negative 2 divided by root 3, which secant's buddy is cosine. So now its cosine is going to be equal to negative root 3 over 2, which is the way far out. So that's, um, did you see what I did on the unit circle? I'm thinking here and here. So 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. There you go. Um, oh, okay. So we have 1 half cosecant squared x is equal to 2. Multiply both sides by 2. Cosecant squared x is equal to 4. Square root, square root, plus minus. And I get cosecant of x is equal to plus or minus 2. That's not very helpful. Cosecant is, but cosecant is sine's buddy. So the reciprocal of this is equal to the reciprocal of that. So when does sine equal plus or minus 1 half? That's the pi over 6 family, and it's the whole pi over 6 family. Okay, um, where is the vertical asymptotes? So secant, okay, what do we know about secant is, um, secant is one over cosine. So when does cosine have zeros? Cosine has zeros at pi over two plus pi k. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this stuff right here that might affect the asymptote and set it equal to the original asymptote. And multiply everybody by 3 to clear this out. x is equal to 3 pi over 2 plus 3 pi k, where k is an element of the integers, is what we should say. Which of the following? So, um, no, 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 yes. <laughs> um, what is a vertical asymptote? Okay, so cosecant, this is... Cosecant is 1 over sine of x. Well, I left off the 4 and I left off the 1 third just to talk about. Um, but the parent function sine, when does it have zeros? So sine of x, cosecant has asymptotes whenever sine has zeros. When does sine have zeros? At pi k. So we're going to take this 4x and set it equal to pi k, divide everybody by 4. I get pi over 4k. So it's, um, it's well... Where are we? So we can, we're pi over 4, but when we add pi, we could, if I plug in 0, I'm at 0, I'm at pi over 4, I'm at pi over 2. I'm all around this circle. There's a lot of answers. Um, which of the following is a vertical asymptote? Uh, pi over 4. Actually, this one would be 2. I, yeah, um, it is, because 4 pi is this one right here. It's coterminal. Um, so I think that that was what was intended. I would maybe change this to 3 pi. Nope, that would be an asymptote too. Um, how would I change this to not make that true? Um, pi over 8? <laughs> Throw in a pi over 8 just to see if you can confuse people, or I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, next one. 
What are we looking at? Oh, sorry. I had a text. I got distracted. <laughs> Um, I'm just as human and I'm just as ready for summer as y'all are. Which of the following has a vertical asymptote at x equals pi? Okay, so who has um, at pi, that's going to be sine. So I know my denominator is going to have sine of x on the bottom. So it's either going to be 1 over sine of x, which is cosecant, or it could be cosine over sine, which is cotangent. Um, so cotangent, oh, okay, so not regular secant. Uh, cosecant, if I do this cosecant 1 half, well, let's see. It would be 1 half x is equal to, normally it has asymptotes at pi k, multiply by 2, x is equal to 2 pi k. Um, so no, this would not have an asymptote. Plug in 0, we're at 0. Plug in 1, we're at 2 pi. So no, that's no good. That was clever. Um, secant, where I shifted over pi. Well, secant normally has asymptotes at pi over 2 plus pi k. If I shift it over pi, then this is now 3 pi over 2 plus pi k. It's still not an asymptote at pi. So that's no good. And we said this from the very beginning. Okay. Has a vertical asymptote. Oh. Well, so we need... None of these have a shift. So let's see. What's the best way to do this? Well, this... The new period is... They're going to still have... Either you have... Either you label your x-axis with pi's, or you see pi and b. Does that make sense? Um, so if I have, if you think about the um, FRQ3 problems where they've changed, um, where you're seeing that real world sine curve or whatever, that looks terrible. But um, what they've done, they typically don't have pi values because it's in terms of time or something like that. Um, but pi always shows up then in your b values some, in some capacity. So what I know is since there's no pi here, I'm going to eliminate these. And then, okay, then I might say, well, secant, I'm down to two secant equations. Secant has asymptotes when x is equal to pi over 2 plus pi k. So let's see, if I take pi x equal to that, I have to multiply everybody by 1 over pi. So when I do that, I get x is equal to 1 half plus k, and so that would work. And for the other one, let's see, if this were a 2 pi, then I would have to do this, 2 pi. And so then this becomes 1 fourth plus 1 half, right? Yes, k. So this would be 1 fourth, 3 fourths, and so forth. So no, this one's no good. So we, it's just that one right there. That was clever. That was, that was a good little problem. Uh, which of the following is a vertical asymptote? Cotangent has asymptotes. It's cosine over sine. So at pi k, so 1 half x equals pi k. Multiply both sides by 2. And there we go. Okay, so this, this is just basically solving an equation. 4 minus root 3 cosecant x. We did some of these already. Subtract 4, we get negative 2. Divide by, um, so we get now a negative. Divided by a negative is now a positive 2 over root 3. So then this cosecant is sine, buddy. So sine becomes the reciprocal. Uh, when does sine equal, so that sine is my y value. So I'm at pi over 3 and at 2 pi over 3. Aren't you glad you know your unit circle? Because without the unit circle, this would be tough. Um, okay, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> I love trig identities. Um, sine of 2x is going to be um, 2 sine x cosine x. And so then 2 and the 1 half, they cancel out. So we just have sine x cosine x. Fantastic. They're trying to trick you. This one is, um, this is with the, the cosine double angle. This is also with the cosine double. This is 1 half of cosine double angle. This is exactly cosine double angle. So this is... Um, so remember, cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And then you can change this, and um, it becomes 2 cosine squared x minus 1, or it's 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So I would have this memorized, and then I would have the Big Daddy memorized, the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And then you can manipulate this and plug it into that equation to get these other two. Um, but it wasn't a cosine double angle, but that's what they were doing. They were throwing those in there to make sure to make sure you were paying attention. Okay, so here's what I see on this next one. Oh, I love trig identities. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine is the cosine. Um, 
So it's cosine, it's gonna be five pi over 11 and two pi over 11. Oh, over 11, all right. And then the cosine one is the opposite S-I-G-N, so that's a plus. So this is gonna be cosine, um, and I knew it was cosine because it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Um, and so there, there's your answer. Sine, cosine, sine, cosine. Okay, so what I like to do, the way I remember this one, is I would say that this is sine seven pi, two pi over seven, cosine pi over seven, minus, and then I would write it as the cosine. I would do the two pi over seven um, in the same position, so first. So when I see co sine, cosine, cosine, sine, that's the sine of two pi over seven and then pi over seven with the same SIG in. So we subtract those and we get sine of pi over seven. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine with the opposite SIG in means we subtract. So it's cosine, oh, this is clever. So it's cosine of four pi over 12 is pi over three. What is cosine of pi over three? When we went over a little, there we go. What is the value? Oh, this behaves in a similar way, sine, cosine. Um, so they, switch, they switched these. I'm, I'm used to seeing it as cosine, sine, but it's the same thing with the same operation. So we add them, this is eight pi over 12. What do we know about eight pi over 12? Four goes in there, two, four goes in there, three. Where is two pi over three? It's here. Um, what is it? This is a sine, so we want this root three over two. Okay, oh. Oh, this is fun. Um, how am I on time? Well, we'll do it. This is still the trig identities. Oh, he's got a ton. Um, I need a drink of water. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Like, subscribe, comment. I'll come back here in just a few minutes. I'll probably, um, yeah, make another video very shortly. Um, all right, let me know how I can help you. Go practice. Steady, steady. Good luck.